Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-Step Recovery Fellowship, and I don't claim to speak for any of them either. My hope is that you will find my words helpful in some way, whether you're in recovery or not. This is episode 105, How to Turn Your Life Around, From Obstacles to Detours. Obstacles. They're not there to block you. They're there to reroute you, to get you to your true path. Remember, the universe is for you, not against you. A few months ago, I was listening to a podcast where the host said, don't believe your obstacle thoughts. They're not true. This really resonated with me, but I wasn't sure why at first. So I took my glass crayon and wrote on the mirror of my bathroom, obstacle thoughts are not true. I'd look at it every day and think what it might mean. And one of the things I came up with is that when my brain starts to go into all the reasons why I can't have what I want or I can't do what I want or something like that, I now question whether those thoughts are actually true. I question those obstacle thoughts. This is part of the major overhaul of my thought life that's happened since I've been in recovery and that I write and speak about on a regular basis. That is, just because I think something doesn't mean it's true. When I couple that understanding with something I learned from Brooke Castillo, it changes everything. She says, a belief is just a thought that you've thought over and over again to the point where you've decided it's true. It's not necessarily true, and you can change your beliefs by examining them and then changing your thoughts. As I continued to ponder the meaning of this saying about obstacle thoughts, another thing occurred to me. When actual obstacles have appeared in my life, I can now see by looking back over time that they weren't true obstacles. When I think back on all the things that felt like absolute disasters in my life, given the perspective of time, I can see that they weren't actually disasters, that they either turned into something fantastic or they led me to something fantastic. This is when I had the epiphany that obstacles are not actually obstacles, they're detours. They're rerouting us onto our actual path. Think about driving down the road and coming to a roadblock where there's a detour sign that says, go this way to get to your destination. The roadblock and the detour are there because there's something ahead that you or someone else might be hurt by, or there's going to be an extreme delay if you go that way. The detour is meant to take you on a different path. You can still get to your destination, but it's just by a different path and likely on a different timetable than originally planned. My experience is that the same is true with things that appear to be obstacles in our lives. Here's an example from 20 years ago. I met someone with the intention of just dating. Neither one of us had any intention of becoming serious, yet we unexpectedly fell in love very soon, and we very quickly started talking about spending the rest of our lives together, and then a few months later, out of the blue, he dumped me, and I was a fucking mess. And then a few months later, he came back, and he apologized, and eventually asked me to marry him. I said yes, and then five months later, he dumped me again. As you can imagine, I was devastated. I'd had my heart broken before, but not like this, and never twice by the same person. This felt like an enormous obstacle to the future that I had envisioned with this man. I thought I'd never be able to live without him, that I'd never get over him, and that I'd never meet someone that I loved so dearly and who loved me so dearly. Yet here I am 20 years later, and I'm completely indifferent to him. A few years after that happened, I got to the point where I became just as grateful that he had dumped me than I was that he had come into my life. 
because there was so much about that relationship that was extremely unhealthy. For one, there was a ton of substance abuse in that relationship on both of our parts. And I was extremely heavy at the time and he loved really heavy women and was constantly giving me things like Boston cream donuts because he wanted me to be even fatter. Had I stayed in that relationship, there's no telling if I'd even be alive to this day. I certainly wouldn't be living happy, joyous, and free the way I am now. With a sweetheart who is clean and sober and thoughtful, and with whom I have a very intimate, healthy relationship. That breakup appeared to be an obstacle on the path to my happily ever after, when in fact, it was a detour. As a result of the deep pain of that relationship, I decided I am not going to wait for the universe to make meaning out of this for me. I'm going to make meaning out of it. So I took a deep look at myself and I realized two things in my life were a fucking mess, my finances and my health. I then proceeded to take a five year period of time over which to overhaul my finances. Then after that, I took about a five year period of time to overhaul my health. And this was well before I got into 12 step recovery. So even though I worked on all that stuff, it wasn't enough. But those two periods of working on my finances and my health paved the way for where I am today. And I wouldn't have done those things had this man not dumped me. Had he not put this thing that I thought was an obstacle, but I now know was a detour in my life. So right now, I am the most financially stable and the healthiest I've ever been at the age of 58. Now, the way we make the transition from taking something that appears to be an obstacle and turning it into a detour is that we make a decision to do so. It really is that easy. There's no need to wait for the perspective of time in the years to come to realize, oh wait, that wasn't an obstacle, it was a detour. Another example just popped in my mind. I was laid off after 19 years of working at Yale. I had been grant funded the whole time, so it was kind of a miracle that I was there for that long without being laid off. Now, many people would think that that would be a disaster a huge obstacle to my ability to be self-supporting. After months of trying to find another job while getting severance pay, I ended up having to go on unemployment, which was less than half of my salary. And that felt like an absolute disaster. It felt like an obstacle for me being able to pay my bills. But when ended up was that it led to all the things I was doing during that time making me create my own business, which is why I am here right now recording this podcast. This is my 105th episode. I have helped thousands of people on their healing, growth, and recovery journeys through my podcast, my writing, and my coaching business. None of that would have happened had I not hit that obstacle of being laid off. And the additional obstacle of not being able to find a job, those seeming obstacles actually turned into detours. And that, my friends, is because the universe is for you, not against you. Remember that those things that appear to be obstacles, excuse me, are actually detours. And that's because the universe knows better than you do. So all you have to do is change your mind about what those seeming obstacles mean. If you want help with this notion of making things mean something else, listen to episode 59, which is called Making Things Mean Things That They Don't. So... You could make this mean that this obstacle is a disaster that's going to ruin my life, or you could decide, I wonder where this detour will take me. One last thing before I sign off. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please do at Higher Power Coaching. 
And there's one week left before my Better Boundaries with Barb three month, three month coaching program begins. The curriculum is going to help you build your own boundary system step by step so you can let go of the guilt and shame you feel when setting boundaries and so you can have a life of well-being that's guided by what you really want, not by what others want. You can check it out at higherpowercc.com slash better boundaries. I'm very selective about who gets in. In other words, I have a boundary about who's allowed to be in the group. I want to make sure that they're a good fit. So I do a 30 minute better boundaries call with everyone before accepting them into the group. And you can sign up for that on that page on my website. That's it for today, folks. Remember, it is never too late to recover. Healing is possible and no one is beyond hope, including you. That's it for today. Please share this episode with anyone who might find it helpful. If you like what you've heard here, you might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, then head on over to barbchat.net or you can get on my calendar for a free 20-minute consultation to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep, lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, then go to barbchat.net and get on my calendar. I'd love to chat with you. Please like and subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast outlet. This helps other people find me. Thanks for listening.